So the first item on our agenda is the Yankee Candle RDA. Um, so we did the site walk this last weekend. So I'll turn it over to you, uh, Bill and Ed, to, to, to present your plan. Okay, I'm going to try and do a screen share. Um, yeah, let me let me make you a let me make you a co-presenter so you can do that. Okay. All right. Let's see if that'll let you do it now. Okay. And again, the operative word is try. I'm a lot more familiar with Microsoft. Um, let me just see how to do it. I know that we've done this before. Should be down near the bottom of your screen. There's a green button called share screen. Oh yeah, right. here we go. Mm -hmm. And let's see, see if it'll pick up desktop too. Yeah, share. Does anybody see my screen share? Yes. Yeah, it looks like okay. the agenda. It looks like the agenda. And so you should probably now, it looks like a site plan. Yeah. Is that what you see now? And can you see my little hand pointer? I'm just circling where it says existing building. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, you, good. That's, you want to okay, go that's full screen structure. with it though. I'm sorry? Maybe go full screen with that file so that we can see it uh, a little better. Just, just bear with me, see what this does to it. Um, I'm on two monitors here. Here we go. Did that blow it up? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really blown up now. It's, I mean, it's like on a huge monitor. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, do we have anybody here at this meeting who is not with us on the site visit on Sunday? Uh, just George, right? Uh, yeah, George, you okay. were not. I've, I was not there, but I've... I've Walk that site on other RDAs. Okay, um, because uh, on Sunday we have made it. We've made some significant changes to the site plan since our meeting on Sunday, and I'm going to try and find that. Uh, here we go. Um, it's jumping around like mad. Uh, but on Sunday, we had come forward with our uh, with an original site plan looking like this here, where we would have a building constructed kind of diagonally off the panhandle of the manufacturing building, uh, with it making an approach to wetlands of approximately 15 feet. And following that meeting, we have made some fairly significant changes to the site plan that I sent out on Monday morning to both uh, Scott Conservation Commission and also Mark Stinson, DEP, uh, both of whom did, uh, thank you, Scott, I acknowledge the receipt of the revised site plan. So that's what I'm gonna speak to you right now. I've just switched over to the revised site plan and what we're looking at, let me just zoom this up so we can hopefully all can see it. We have taken the fragrance building. Now you recall that back in 2019, we put forward an RDA to build a fragrance building more or less where my hand is showing on the easterly side of the panhandle. And that was never constructed, no plans to construct it. And so that came with the idea of having the fragrance building expansion on the westerly side of the panhandle. And commission raised numerous concerns, which we share uh, relative to the proximity of the building addition to the wetland line. So what we've done is we basically rotated this addition, put it tucked right up against the building. So it is now, instead of being 15 feet from a corner to the wetland line, it is now about 50 feet from the wetland line as shown. So that is a design change that we made. We also again explored the, explored the, explored the feasibility of stopping mowing part of the south lawn of the facility. Uh, I think as we know historically, the wetlands line back in 90, 1994 was where my where my little hand pointer is. 
And that has migrated in a north, northerly direction over the past 27 years, getting very close to the building structure. So this wetland line is now as it now exists in 2021. And by the way, the area where my hand pointer is on Sunday afternoon was up to six inches deep of water. So we're proposing just to plain stop mowing areas that are more than 15 feet south of the fire hydrants and let that revert to woodland. Um, so it'll be eventually in a similar condition as this. And again, that is subject to the approval by the fire department. Um, we selected 15 feet uh, as an ar arbitrary measure, large enough to get equipment in to maintain the water main, which runs between these fire hydrants, and also to be able to access the fire hydrants in the event of a fire. So if the fire department is willing, we're just gonna stop mowing this area and you'll see that it looks significantly different, I'm sure, um, nine months from now in next month's growing season. So uh, in summary, we are putting forward an RDA to build a fragrance building addition, take the increased runoff, put that into an infiltration structure. Uh, so there is no change in runoff characteristics. It is a buffer zone project, and we do not expect that this would have any impact at all on the existing wetland, which is probably gonna to continue to encroach to the building. But that's where we're at. Uh, any questions that I can entertain? Um, if the fire department approves your uh, decommissioned area, did you wanna like flag it with a couple pieces of rebar or stakes or something? So we got whoever's mowing, just, just keep mowing it or? Yeah, I think it makes sense to uh, put a couple pieces of rebar in the ground and then that'll only be necessary for the first couple of mows in the spring. And then it'll eventually, I mean, certainly a couple months down the road, it'll be pretty obvious. Yeah, this place isn't mowed. And then we can just pull it out and just, just let it revert. Mm -hmm. And the estimate, we're it's hoping... It's going to revert pretty quickly. I, yeah. It's going to revert very quickly. That area is, or... I'm sorry? Any estimate how much area that is, just out of curiosity? Uh, it's, I pasted out on Sunday. It's about 40 to 50 feet. Um, it's about 40 to 50 feet from here up to <laughs> the end of this line. Mm -hmm. And again, it varies a little bit because you have like, like a lot of the tree trunks here and a lot of foliage already overhanging this area. But I paced from the fire hydrant down to where the edge of the foliage was obvious, and it was about 40 to 50 feet. Okay. And uh, yes, I did get my feet wet because there's some pretty deep puddles like around here up to about six inches of water. And over here has also some pretty deep puddles. Not unexpected. <laughs> water tables rising regionally. So Ed, uh, how much, can you tell us uh, how close the fill is going to come to the wetland boundary in order to uh, construct that building where you represented it on the plan? Uh, we're looking at, it's about 40, let's see, I gotta look at the measurements here carefully. It's about 45 feet thereabouts. If that answers your question, it's gonna come Going to come down here a little, you know, going to come down here around here a little bit. Okay. And are you going to have uh, erosion control in place? Uh, yes, we are. And um, that is quite articulated in the original RDA, and that is unchanged. Now, I will go back to that description. Um, just bear with me, please. Um, as I wrote that right into the RDA form, um, and it says the work entails expanding. Um, let's see, where's, where do we talk about that? Um, use straw wattles, 12 inches, and then personnel inspect the upgrade inside the straw wattles, removing accumulated silt, replacing wattles as necessary until construction is complete and disturbed areas have stabilized. Straw wattles will then be removed from the construction area and discarded as demolition waste. Duration of the construction is eight to 12 weeks. Yeah, I think what I would like to see is uh, <clears throat> the, the area of fill delineated on the plan 
and uh, you know the limit of work and the location of where the erosion control is going to be placed. And I would assume that you would want to place the erosion control right at the limit of work so that it can serve both as a way of demarking the limit of work for a construction crew and also to keep uh, any sediment or erosion as far from the wetland as possible. No, okay, I can certainly move that work limit as I have to. I'm just saying you should be able to give yourself plenty of room where you can do the work, but just sort of indicate on the plan where the erosion control will be installed. It's, yeah, that, that, that's indicated right now. I've got the erosion control right here where yeah. my pointer and shower. Right. Limit of work and erosion controls. Right. I've got that as a co, co whatever it is, a co, um, I can't think of the word, co something um, structure. Yeah, so does it, does it need to be that close to the wetland now that you've moved the building? Uh, probably not, but to be conservative, I think we'd be best to leave it where it's at. Well, if the fill is going to be 45 feet from the wetland boundary, I don't know why you can't bring the erosion control farther up the slope. <clears throat> well, there's no reason why I can't, but I'm not sure what, what benefit that's going to do. Well, I mean, I can, uh, because what you've got, you're going to have, you're going to have gr uh, undisturbed grass below the construction. So, so if the precise limit is where my hand is, uh, you're gonna get siltation runoff, you're gonna get grass, which is gonna be picking up any siltation up gradient of that erosion control. So I would think you'd want the erosion control as far from the construction as you can to get the maximum benefit of the grass for silt removal. I would think, <clears throat> I would think the opposite, you know, Best practice for erosion and sediment control is to stop the water as close as possible to its source. And then if anything were to escape the water, uh, the silt fence or the wattles, then you got all of that grass to filter it before it hits the wetland boundary. Yeah, there, there's, certainly, there's, there's certainly merit to what you're saying, Scott. I'm just saying that based on experience, again, this has nothing, nothing to do with this RDA, uh, but we have a lot of stormwater runoff coming from the parking lot into a drainage swale. And there is a lot of undisturbed grass here. And that has helped us immeasurably uh, of keeping silt out of that swale as a stormwater management measure. So on that basis, that's why I left the erosion control right where it is. But there's no erosion control over where you were showing as an example. Up here, no, no. Um, right, so there, it uh, only has no grass. Open... Yes, that only has grass. Right now, this only has grass. Yeah, and, and there's a difference between parking lot runoff and a construction site where you have, uh, you know, open uh, soil exposed and, and soil being deposited. So I would be much more comfortable seeing the erosion control closer to the construction site Give yourself as much room as you need to to do the construction, but uh, I would move the erosion control to the place where you have the limit of work. Okay, we can do that. Anybody else from the commission have any questions or comments about the, the proposal? Uh, I'm all set, thanks. So I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking aloud. Let's, let's say a worst case scenario. And again, this is worst case. I, I, don't, I don't have the elevations right now. But let's say we have to bring in four feet of fill in here. I'm just saying four feet, that's a number. Mm -hmm. If I do a, a three to one slope, uh, that would bring me down 12 feet. Yeah, four, yeah, four times three is 12. That'd bring, bring me down about 12 feet from the edge of the building. If I do a three to one slope, you know, as a worst case analysis, four, four feet uh, of fill. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> three to one, three to one slope is pretty standard. Yeah. So my my recommendation to the commission, if there are no more questions or comments, so let me just pause just to make sure there are no other questions. George, you satisfied? I'm, I'm all set, yeah. 
Monty? Yeah, I'm good. Anne? Yes, I'm all set. And Andrew, I think you already said that you're all set with that. All right. So I would propose that we can approve this um, with a negative RDA. But as a condition, I would say that we would like to see an updated site plan that includes the contours of the fill that you're going to bring in and the location of the sediment, erosion and sediment control, and that that be as far upslope as is feasible to put it. And that upon submission of that plan and approval by a representative of the commission, then you would be able to proceed with the construction after the appeal period is last. And essentially, we would not issue the, I guess we would issue it with that condition, but we would hold off on approving uh, the construction until you, you give us a more updated plan. And I'm fine with that, Scott. We've got to, we've got to redesign this now with the structural engineer. We, you know, we just redrew this as a concept and, you know, we've yeah. still got a lot of work to do. So, you know, it's, it's this is, we tried to push this project into 2021 and we realized that we're just running out of daylight and it's, it's going to be a, you know, probably a 2022 project at this point, you know, with lead time on steel and everything like that. So we've got a little bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. I realize that there's very little time since our site walk to try to put this together and that there are some details that aren't yet on it. And rather than hold up an approval and a vote tonight, we can vote with that condition that then allows you to, to submit the plan after the fact. And if that's, that sound, it sounds like that's something you're okay with. I am, yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. Uh, other commissioners, are you, con uh, are you okay with that? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, so then the proposal before uh, the board is to issue a negative determination of applicability with this one condition that requires submission and approval of an updated site plan. And um, is the commission um, uh, okay with having me be the representative of the commission that could then review and approve once that plan comes in? If anybody would like to see it, I'd be happy to forward to you for your review before I sign off on it. Agree with your judgment. Sounds good. I'm good with yeah. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. All right, so with that proposal on the table, um, all in favor, uh, roll call vote, Ann? Aye. Andy? Aye. George? Aye. Montserrat? Aye. And I vote aye as well. All right, so we will issue the negative determination of applicability with that, um, with that one condition. It may take a little while for us to get the paperwork out because I've got a fill it out, leave it at the town offices so that people can come and sign it and then we'll get it in the mail as soon as we can. But it sounds like you're not in a rush. So uh, if that's okay with you, that's probably, it might be within a week or so that we'll get that sent out to you. Yeah, I think that's, that's, fine. that's exactly how we, that's exactly how we do it on our commission as well. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, thank you very much for working with us to come up with a plan that we could feel comfortable with and uh, we'll get that paperwork out to you. And sh who should I send it to? Uh, send, send it to me, copy bill. Okay. Well, I, I have to send the hard copy to one of you. So I send the hard copy to you, Ed? Uh, send the hard copy to Bill. I don't need hard copy. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll scan it and get it off to you. Okay. Yep. All right, sounds good. Thank well, you thank you very much. much. Okay, thanks a lot. Now have a good evening all now. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night. All right. Bye. All right. Second on the agenda is uh, Emily and, and Bill uh, to talk about the conservation restriction that you're proposing. And, um, you know, there's an opportunity for the commission to weigh in and support uh, to the, uh, to the uh, select board and also to fill out the uh, municipal certification on it. So, Emily, go ahead. You have the floor. Oh, well, Thanks very much. Uh, Scott, it's Bill. Yep. Can you hear me? I can. I don't have video. So well, we hear you. Okay, good. That's perfect. Okay, fine. Okay, Emily. Thanks, Bill. I'm glad you're able to join us. Uh, these technical issues are always tricky. Um, 
Thanks, folks, for putting us onto your agenda tonight. Um, I sent the conservation restriction and a couple of maps. Um, I can share a map if that works as a, a place to sort of start from. Yeah, let me make you a co-host so that you can share. Okay. Okay, you should be all set. There we go. So um, what I hope you're seeing is a, a survey of Bill's land. Yep. <clears throat> um, this is an older survey. It shows the entirety of the property. I'll skip over to another. This shows the excluded areas, uh, which includes um, Bill and Jane's house. And then there's a 5.016 acre exclusion area. And you might be familiar with um, a compost business, an excellent compost business that Bill started and it's being uh, it's under different management now, but it's still on the property. That is not going to be under the restriction. So just for clarification, um, these areas will be uh, exempted from it and excluded from the restriction. So um, I can talk about the restriction itself. Um, um, and I'll have Bill maybe fill in a few gaps about sort of the, the personal journey of his family and what, what it means to them to conserve it. Um, but we've been talking to, to Bill and Jane for a few years. Um, they had an interest in conserving their property. Um, I'll open up one that sort of gives you the, the bigger picture of where it is. Can you see the landscape uh, map now? Okay, yes. great. So you can see that it's near other conserved land, um, uh, land owned by Department of Fish and Game. Um, there's farms and, and private um, conservation in this area. Um, that Esther Wildlife Management Area, also Fish and Game. Um, Smith College has some land that's conserved, and then there's reservoir-related conservation in the area. Um, this, there's, and uh, off to the um, east, there's Northampton water supply land as well. So um, it's going to be part of a, a block of conserved land that's pretty considerable for a variety of different reasons and uses. Um, on the property, um, the um, resources that are called out in the municipal certification that we sent you um, include, oh, here we go, um, core habitat um, as documented by Biomap 2, um, there's farm soils. Um, uh, one of the items that I noted in my email um, is that the survey that was conducted in the 80s is different from the tax parcel layers. You'll see. Um, so Bill's been in touch with the assessors and that's gonna be updated. We've got you know, a letter notifying us of that. And so the, the land that's gonna be under the conservation restriction is what's been surveyed in these two surveys. So there's, this is the full property. Um, you can see the West Whateley Cemetery is another sort of uh, excluded area. Or it's, it's, it's a sort of an inholding, it's separate ownership and it will not be under the restriction and then the excluded areas. Um, but the, um, the property um, has a lot of unique pro um, um, aspects to it, particularly the um, population of native fish that are on the um, I always get it mixed up. Is it the ground brook? Ground brook. Um, okay. Billy, would you mind saying a few words about the, that particular um, studied population? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> maybe uh, uh, Scott and some of, some of the other uh, members are aware that the USGS Geological Survey, which does a lot more than geology, they do research for all kinds of federal agencies, They've been doing long-term research on uh, uh, Westbrook, Jimmy Nolan Brook, uh, another brook down there, and Ground Brook, which which the bulk the bulk of which runs through our property. And uh, they've been working on this for probably over 15 years, and it's just it's going to be ongoing. They're they're trying to. Uh, um, understand more about the uh, native brook trout populations and certainly their possible, uh, well, we just hope they make it through through the climate change uh, stuff that we're going through. 
But anyway, through all this research, <clears throat> I found out in one of their papers that Groundbrook ends, uh, deposits its, its water into the Westbrook, and there's about a five-foot waterfall there or so. And whatever fish go down the waterfall, they don't get back up again. So they're, they're, it's a very isolated population of brook trout. And, um, and they're basically in, in this very small uh, stream. I mean, there's plenty of water in it, but it's not very long. Uh, they are um, reproducing there. And uh, they don't get very big. You know, a large, large one, a monster might be six inches. Anyway, um, but they're there. And the USGS and their uh, original research, because of that waterfall, figured that they've probably been isolated from the rest of the watershed for over 900 years. And I think that's pretty special. So that's one of the reasons why we're very excited about doing this. You know, save the brook trout. It's, um, I've got the landscape map up again, which I hope you can see. It's a little hard to read, but West Brook runs along the boundary of the property along the, the east and sort of north sides. And then Ground Brook runs through the center of the property. Um, there's some agriculture, there's fields, there's an orchard um, near the street in this smaller 1.67 acre area. Um, and then there's some woodland management that, that Bill and Jane do. Um, so the conservation restriction, it's a, it's a document that's based on this, the state template, uh, past state template, but it's um, um, language that has been used many times. Um, it's intended to be a permanent document um, that will be uh, restrict the usage of the land um, to certain types of activities, including forestry, agriculture, recreation, trails, uh, maintenance and creation, um, uh, improvement for wildlife habitat, um, removal of invasive species, um, but not to allow development um, and um, other uh, uses of the land that would degrade the natural resources. Um, the intent is for Bill and Jane to sign it. Um, Franklin Land Trust, our executive director, will sign it, and that, uh, along with the, the town and the state's approval, will, um, once it's recorded, create a permanent state of conservation, and then um, future owners will um, be required to abide by the, the same agreement that, that Bill and Jane have, have, have placed on the land, and then the land trust will be the, the third party holder or the, or the secondary party holder coming out every year to make sure that the land is still being managed according to those agreements and um, to um, enforce the um, restriction if need be. Um, the town's not being asked to be a co-holder. It's just a, a, a standard requirement of a conservation restriction, as you may well know, but it, you know it's different for everybody's experience with these things, um, that the, the town is asked to sign off. So we'll be speaking with the select board next week. Next week. Um, and you, it, we bring it to the Conservation Commission to bring it to your attention. Um, it would not place any burden on the town for the long-term enforcement or monitoring. It's just a, a one-time um, participation point. Um, and then the state um, has staff that review the document, um, both with an eye to crafting it and for natural resources, and then also from a legal point of view. Um, and it's been drafted by our attorney. Um, and the goal is for us to record in November and um, place it on permanent record. So um, Bill, did you wanna say a little bit more about what your thoughts were or what, what impelled you to do it? Although the fish clearly were one of the important considerations for you. Well, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, I, I, I think conserving land is a wonderful thing, and we're in a position now where we can certainly do it. Uh, it's, uh, I mentioned the, the trout thing, which is highly interesting, but it's, an, it's a very interesting piece of land. Uh, I hate to think that if I'm not around year, years to come, which I won't be, um, that some future uh, uh, person would uh, mess it up, you know, just uh, you know, do whatever on it. I mean, it's got tons of gravel. I mean, lots of different things could be done on it, which we, which we haven't and, and don't intend to do. Um, 
it's got decent crop land for growing. Well, basically, most of it's in hay. We have a small orchard. Uh, the uh, forest land we have managed over the years, and we've had a uh, a couple of timber harvests, which uh, uh, resulted in some very good, high quality uh, hardwood lumber coming off. Uh, red, red oak, uh, black cherry, and uh, maple, notably. Um, we're very, we're basically adjacent to the uh, fish and wildlife land across the street, and we 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 donated uh, about roughly 15 acres a number of years ago to fish and wildlife as part of the land that they ultimately bought from the uh, from the Judsons, and it was sort of like to help. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, convince them to to go ahead with the uh, the bigger project. So we we we're just into conserving land, and but I think having the land being useful, a working forest, a working farmland, and what all that is very important too. Any any questions or anything? Nothing. Is, is everybody good, there? Yeah, yeah, we're, great. yeah we're, I'm fully supportive, Bill. I'm really excited that you're doing this. And, and you're right, there's a lot of value on your land. And I know the story about the brook trout, and I'm really excited that that brook will be protected. And uh, yeah, I think, I, I think we're probably all in support, but I'll let other commissioners speak for themselves. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Nope. No problem. Hey, Bill, it's George Owens. I think it's great. Thanks for doing this. Oh, no problem. No problem. I'm glad to do it. I'm curious, Scott and Emily, are there other plots of land in the town of Whateley that are conservation, have conservation restrictions on, on them? Because the reason and I bring that up is uh, I'm also on the Agricultural Commission, and we're talking about various things. And at our last meeting, a map was produced that was created by FERCOG uh, showing open space and a recreation plan 2021. And I was looking at a little key under conservation restriction, and I couldn't tell looking at the map if there were any other parcels. Do you guys know it all? You can't see it right now, Bill, but I got a map up that shows some of the other parcels around you. Some of them are in public ownership um, by towns or by okay. state agencies, but there okay. is privately conserved land. Um, we can we can work to get you some uh, maps, and, and I'm sure I don't know maybe the Conservation Commission will also be set up to do that. But um, MassGIS makes um, that information available. It's always a moving target. You know, it, it can always be more updated. Um, so there might be some that are missing, but there should be pretty good data for you guys about, um, and, and also it should break it down into agricultural versus conservation restrictions. Um, so that you can get a sense of what, what land's been conserved for agricultural purposes in town. Actually, I think I am now seeing some, some uh, pieces. It's, you know, the way keys are for showing different things on maps. It doesn't help that I'm red and green colorblind, I guess. So. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they can put textures on there for you. <laughs> yeah. A couple of places there's here. A there. of, there's a lot of APR lands, agricultural preservation restriction land in Waitley, uh, or a fair number of, of parcels. And then there are others that have CRs. And, and I think Franklin Land Trust was involved in the Casey conservation restriction that's um, in, in the sort of triangle between uh, Westbrook Road, uh, Chestnut Plain Road, and Haydenville Road, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the Smith College uh, property is another conservation restriction. Uh, okay. So, so there are I other. See it now, yeah. Um, a lot of them are, are are agricultural, but there are some others that are in that are non-agricultural. The key or the legend is sometimes very not enlightening, so it really is a matter of. Uh, knowing what you're looking at to be able to tell what you're looking at. So I can understand the confusion. Mm -hmm. um, one other quick comment I just wanted to make. Um, I'm so glad that everyone on the committee, their commission sounds very supportive and really gets what we're doing. 
Um, you know, oftentimes towns and have concern about um, land being conserved, so that comes off the tax roll. And you know, the land here, um, it probably won't make any difference in terms of the taxes. Um, I think most of the land is enrolled. Is it enrolled in 61 presently, Bill? One A. Might have been a 61A. So that that's what met, you know, determines the tax um, assessment. Um, so it won't change. And oftentimes woodlands or lands that aren't con, aren't developed are um, taxed at a, a back acres value. So it often is very neutral. Um, and then also the fact that they're excluding some area um, means that there was that 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 is the more highly taxed land. And there um, there's a house already on the property. And there's also a business, so it sort of is contributing to the the viability and the growth and the the um, flourishing of the 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 town as well. So we're we like to see land doing both things, having protecting the natural resources and also helping the the town be a vital growing place. Just because I'm on another board with CPC, uh, Bill, I have some data from another member. About 4.2 percent of Whaley is under conservation restriction. And five point okay. four is about APR, so that's about five hundred acres of conservation and seven hundred acres of agricultural protected. So, these are what's up there? APR, huh? Interesting. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess I would suggest if the commission is amenable that I send a message to the select board indicating our support for this CR. And that uh, on behalf of the Conservation Commission, I signed the municipal certification that just uh, validates the natural resource value of the property. Uh, so uh, I'll just ask for a roll call vote on that. Uh, Andrew? Yes. George? Yes. Montserrat? Yep. Ann? Yes. Great. And um, Emily? If I sign this municipal certificate, do you need a hard copy with my signature or is a scan document or electronic signature adequate? Scanned would be fine. Okay. All right. I can, and I'll send that to you. Perfect. That'd be great. All right. Uh, well, we're very excited, Bill. We've been very happy that you're, and thankful that you're doing this to protect this important piece of land. And we have, yep. have our full support and we will express that support to the board. I don't expect that there'll be any trouble there either. No, I, I don't think so, but I appreciate your support and everything. Right. You guys are a good group, doing good things for the town. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Yep. All Thanks. right. Thank you very much, and uh, okay. take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you okay. so much for your time. Take care, everyone. Okay, right. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. All right. Um, I guess next was the uh, minutes of our last meeting. Anybody have any comments about those minutes corrections? Nope. All right. All in favor of accepting the minutes, Anne? Yes. George? Yes. Montserrat? Aye. And Andy? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, under other business, I have just one quick piece of business to, to run by you. Um, I did receive an email from the, um, uh, it, let me find the, the document, um, from Chris Chamberlain about the uh, cannabis production facility at Seven River Road. Uh, that they are making a change in the layout. And I'll, I'll share my screen so that you can see it. So this was the layout as they presented it when we approved the project. And the only changes is that instead of 12 separate greenhouses that they're going to consolidate into two greenhouses, mega greenhouses. So it looks like the same footprint, uh, same basic usage. It's just gone from 12 se separate greenhouses to two large ones. And this seems like a very minor change in the plan that should not require any additional filing with the commission, but I wanted to run it by you to see if anybody had any concerns or questions about it. 
Did that change any of the stormwater runoff, Scott? Now it's a more consolidated footprint or? You know, it, it may uh, yield a little bit more runoff, but uh, my guess is, is that it, it's such a flat piece of land that it's not actually going to go anywhere. Yes. So it's not really going to go into the wetlands. It's just, you know, really a, probably a de minimis change. Okay. Yeah, no, I see they're controlling uh, runoff and uh, have a pretty hefty rainwater storage there. Yeah, rainwater storage tank, 5,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not shown on the previous plan. So I don't know if that's something they added to deal with that or not. But it's a good thing. Yes, yes. All right, well, if nobody has any objections, I will write back and tell them that, that we're fine with this and that there's no need to file anything more with us uh, relative to this change. I'm, I agree. I'm fine with it, yeah. All right. Yeah. So then I'll just ask any of you whether you have any other business for us tonight. Can't think of anything. I'll update you on the resource replacement fee committee. Um, as I suspected may, might happen, it's uh, developed into a series of ongoing meetings uh, with research attached and uh, mm. lots of um, circular discussion. Uh, <laughs> How many people um, are on the committee? Not many. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, Joyce. Palmer Fortune, Judy Markland, John Devine, and uh, me. Mm. Um, as Is a, one of you chairing? Uh, Joyce typically chairs. But um, this was uh, billed as a relatively simple task. Uh, the resource replacement fee was passed as part of a, uh, a, an amendment to the bylaws in 2020. And it's intended to um, provide the town with um, recompense for, for land that's taken out of 61 or 61A for a solar farm, large scale solar farm. So the bylaw was passed with no indication of what the fee should be. Um, the money is to be put into the open space fund for the uh, CPA. Um, in order to enable the town to finance uh, further conservation restrictions and APRs. So it's the first such fee in the state. It's, it's Judy Markland's concept that she's pushed. And uh, so now we're having to try to backfill and figure out uh, what was intended and what the real purpose of this is and, uh, and uh, how we come up with any kind of comparables. So far, we've begun looking at um, what the per acre costs are for APRs and CRs. Um, Judy has some data on that from Waitley. Um, it's pretty limited. So we've reached out to land trusts um, and have heard nothing back from any of the, the four we've touched so far. And there's another meeting next week. So mm. I'll keep you posted. It's called the resource replacement fee. Yep. All right. And it's a, under the solar bylaw um, in, the, in the zoning bylaws. So yep. one or two sentences. Committee. All right. I got it for the okay. minutes. And I have one, one question uh, related to Obear. Yeah. In, in kind of broadly, have there been any? challenges to CRs in the state through land court or whatever by subsequent owners? That I don't know. I imagine there might have been, um, and that's why there's a state agency that reviews them all for their legal, you know, make sure they're legally solid right, before right. they're approved. Uh, and there are some really old ones that were put in place before there were guidelines. 
uh, but I'm not aware of, of any specific challenges. I'm just curious as to how bulletproof they really are. I don't think there have been any challenges of recent CRs. So mm -hmm. CRs that have been, you know, scrutinized by the state and, and done according to the guidelines. I think that those have held up pretty well. Okay, just point of curiosity. Yeah, well, I'm, um, from my years on the MACC board and, and the Kestrel board, I've not heard any concerns about the vulnerability of these CRs. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. The ones that are getting challenged are the ones that the sweetheart deals like Trump got in New York. Ah. Uh, he basically inflated the value of his property and got a huge tax write-off for donating a CR um, on land that he couldn't develop anyway. <laughs> which uh, one? The Donald J. Trump Park, which I drive past. Uh, <laughs> which, which, which park is like that? Westchester. I forget which one it was. But one of them is, I think it's like they have like an estate, a family estate. Yeah, that's a different. He wanted to turn it into a golf course or a resort or something, and yeah. he couldn't get it permitted. So then he thought, okay, well, I'll donate the land and get a huge tax write off. And apparently, this happens all over the country, where mm -hmm. you know these people will stand up like a land trust to accept the conservation restriction, but they're not really a land trust in any conventional sense. They're they're sort of created specifically to make these sweetheart deals, and. Uh, you know, so and some land trusts have gotten in bed with with these developers and gotten, you know, a big fee for stewardship on a CR and then been criticized by the land trust community for essentially buying into that kind of a scam. OK, so something something to watch out for. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been legislation pending at the federal level that would prevent those kinds of deals from happening in the future. I don't think it's passed yet, but there are people trying to close that loophole. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No. All right, well, thank you for coming out tonight <laughs> for this meeting. And uh, uh, let's see, there was, I did get one phone call. I guess I will report to you um, and I can't remember the fellow's name. I can look it up. Um, I can find it. Uh, Ralph Oshesky, he lives across from um, Hurlihy Park. And what, what was the last name, Scott? I think it's Oshesky. Starting with an O? O, yeah, O-L-S-Z-E-W-S-K-I. Um, he's, uh, he's near 90 years old, and he leases his land to Jim Pesheznik, and he was concerned about the way that Chesnick is managing the land in the back and that he feels like he's uh, shifting the dra draining the, the water onto his property and making his property less valuable uh, in the back land. And so we had a good conversation uh, about his concerns. I told him that we often have limited jurisdiction over agriculture and that there was an EPA enforcement done not that long ago that tried to take care of some of the historic violations that had happened and uh, suggested that he contact the NRCS and gave him the phone number for the Greenfield office. And he seemed happy to have the conversation and to get the referral. And, uh, you know, he had said he wanted to come to the next meeting and talk to the conservation commission. I told him that it was going to be a remote meeting. And he said, well, I'm not so good with technology. So we had our conversation and I told him that I would report it back to you. Maybe the 
Yes, yeah, the same same last name as the River Valley Farm Stand. Is that what you were saying? Andrew? Oh, that's Sobieski, isn't it? Sobieski. All right, that's different. Yeah, I think there's like a house between where the J5 Creamy Farm Stand is, the Przesnik's house. There's a little house in between the two of them. I think maybe that's it. That may be it. Yeah. Anyway, last time that uh, NRCS ha investigated some of these things, they're the ones that discovered the wetland changes that had happened over a period of years. And uh, they're the ones that you know took action on it. And so I assume that if they contact NRCS and NRCS investigates, if there's anything that looks like a wetland violation that we would hear about it. So I guess I'll let you know if I hear anything. All right. Well, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. We'll see you next month.